Welcome students. We are now moving into two sample tests. So we are trying to look at hypothesis testing for differences. So we're still in this differences category. But instead of one test, like we talked about last time, we now have two groups. So we're looking at differences between two different samples, which are our groups. And we have two choices. It can either be an independent sample or a dependent sample. So if it's an independent sample, that means the groups are completely different and you can't be in both groups. You are either in one or the other. So you're either a male or a female. You either live in Colorado or you live in California. You can't be in both. If it is a dependent sample, that means the groups are the same people and we just tested them twice. So if we do a pre-post test, that's what this is looking at. So I test you before your stats class to see what you know, and then I test you after your stats class to see what you know, and I can hopefully show growth throughout the class. We have some assumptions, and these are really important. So this is continuous data. So we are looking at one score that is continuous, and then we're breaking it down by groups. The variable should be normally distributed. We are assuming independence of observation, meaning each person scores their own and you're not working in groups to get your score. We are assuming that one sample is independent of the other sample. Even if it's your score in the pre-post, you don't get to look at your pre-test when you're doing your post-test. So they're completely different tests. And then there's this new one and it's called homogeneity of variance. And this has to do with the two samples should have pretty similar variants. So that means that the girls group isn't spread more widely around the mean than the boys group. So the spread, the variance around that mean should be pretty similar throughout. So we can violate a couple of these assumptions if we have to. And if we violate them, we are going to talk about this idea of robustness. And what robust means is that we can violate the assumption and not affect a p-value. So we want the variable to be normal. So we want it to have that nice normal distribution. Um, if it's not completely normal, we can say, well, we hope so, but it's okay. And we can violate that one. We can also violate this idea of homogeneity of variance. So the variance can be different within the groups if the groups are the same size or pretty close to. So if one group is 45 and one group is 50, that's close enough, we're okay. If one group is 20 and the other group is 100 and the variance isn't the same, then we're not okay. Unless... The group with the smaller sample does not have the largest variance. Meaning if the sample of 100 is really close to the mean, so the spread is not very far, but the smaller sample size, so the group of 20, the variance is all over the place, it's spread really wide around the mean, that's a problem. I'm more okay if the variance with the group of 20 is really tight and close to the mean, and the variance with 100 people is more spread out. So this independent samples, this is the most commonly used t-test, this is the one that we're going to focus on the most. So this occurs when there is no logical relationship between the groups. So you're either in one group or the other, you can't be in both. And all groups are completely independent from each other. So we could randomly assign people to group one, group two then you're in group one or you're in group two. We could assign them based on some characteristic about them. So graduates, not graduates, male, female. Um, you live in Colorado, you live in California. We can do all kinds of different things. We could do one group of volunteers and one group of non-volunteers, although doing research with non-volunteers is never a good idea. We could also have two intact groups. So I could compare two of my classes and see um, if one's better than the other, if one's scoring higher. I could also do a treatment and another control. So I could give video supports to one group and not the other and see how that actually affects the classes. For example, 
I could compare math scores for groups in traditional instruction, so in a classroom, versus online. I could compare customer satisfaction for Colorado and California. I could compare a treatment group to a control group. So they get some kind of treatment and they get nothing or they get sugar pills. I could compare IQ of male and female. So the hardest part about the independent sample t-test is deciding which ones to use. So we have two different equations that are essentially the same thing, but they function slightly differently. So our choice between the two equations depends on homogeneity of variance. So the first, before we can even decide what test to use, we have to understand the F test. So we're going to conduct an F test first, and we're going to look at the variance between them. So we're going to take the two groups, and we're going to put the standard, I'm sorry, we're going to put the variance of the larger and divided by the variance of the smaller group. Doesn't matter if males are on top and females are on bottom, it just goes back and forth. Whoops, sorry. So to figure out if the F test is significant, shocking, we're gonna take F, we're going to Google F to P value and see if it is significant. We will have degrees freedom for numerator and denominator. If this F test is significant, so the value is smaller than 0 0.05, then we do not have HOV and we're going to use formula one. If the value of the F test is not significant, then we have homogeneity of variance and we are going to use formula two, which is called the pooled T test. So we do an F test. If it's significant, we use Morris. If it's not significant, we use pooled test. That's all you gotta know. So here's what they look like, and yes, they're kind of crazy looking, but it's really not that bad once you plug in the values. And I will have a whole other video on how you do this in Excel. So we have mean one, mean two, and then we have some kind of standard error down here. So this is Moore's. Pooled is even worse to look at, I'm really sorry. Don't worry too much, again, Excel will do this for you if you would like. So this one is pooling the variance. This one is not. So theoretically, functionally, it's the same idea. It just is how are we accounting for the variance between them is a little bit different. And you have different degrees freedom for both of them. So keep that one in mind too. So the degrees freedom for the Morse test is just n minus one of whichever group is smaller. Here we are again pooling so both groups together, minus two. Dependent sample. So this is going back to our pre-post. There is another equation that you would use. I know that that is not shocking at this point. There's another equation. Um, I'm not gonna go over it too much. This is something that we would do in Excel and I'll show you how to do that when we get to the Excel part. Um, but it takes into account the correlation between group one and two, between the pre and post, and looking at the differences in between those. When we report a t-test, or any kind of statistical test, the first thing you do is, what type did you use? <laughs> did you use Morse? Did you use pooled? Did you use a one-sample t-test? Then we give the result with a t-value, so t equals 2.1, the degrees freedom, maybe that's 49, and then the p-value that's associated with that. So a p-value of 0 0.03. We can write that like this if you want to simplify it. Otherwise, just write it out. We are also going to state the direction. So if we found a significant difference, what group was higher? Was it males, was it females? We also, at least in a chart or somewhere near there, we want to make sure that we give the mean, standard deviation, and sample size, which can be in a chart and you just say, see table one. And of course, whatever result you have, so P equals 0 0.03, do you reject the null? Do you fail to reject the null? What does this mean? Is there a difference? Is there not a difference? Alrighty, so at this point, we have a lot of different options, and some of these we haven't even talked about yet. They will be further videos. 
So if we have a research question that is looking for differences, our first thing we gotta figure out, is it one sample compared to the population? Is it two samples? Or is it three or more groups? If it is one sample, we have a couple choices. We have talked about the Z-test and the T-test. We are going to be adding in proportions later. For two samples, that's what we did today. Is it independent? And then we have two choices. Do we have a significant F value? Use mores. If it's not significant, use pooled. <clears throat> if our two groups are pre-post, then they are dependent. It's the same people in both groups. And this is the one that we would use in Excel. We will be adding proportions and we will be adding ANOVA in further videos. <laughs>